Thank you, everyone. Let's see. Who here, by a show of hands, this was their first DEF CON? Woo! <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to kind of let you know what you're in for. This should take an hour to an hour and a half. We're going to kind of go through a whole journey of backstories of what it took to produce, um, things we learned along the way, what the departments did and didn't do. Um, and along the journey, we'll tell you about uh, our transparency report, plans for next year, um, and award the black badges. So if you haven't been here before, that's what you're in for. And if you have been, thanks for coming back. Um, and this is like the crowning achievement, the final sort of celebration for how we've pulled it off after a year of planning. And so I just want everybody to have a good time. And if you've got a beer, have a drink with me. I like how the community just delivers. A light beer. Okay, go for the very first one. That's one. Put that up. Okay. Fuck it, we'll do it live. So there is one reality that I want to confront with you up front and personal at the very beginning of the closing ceremonies, and that is DEF CON 27 is not DEF CON 1. Um, we've grown quite a bit over the years. Um, I think somebody who hasn't, a friend of mine, hadn't come to DEF CON since DEF CON 8. Um, and he was one of the guys in the room when we named DEF CON. And he was walking around and he was like, you know, in this room we could fit DEF CON 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, <laughs> 6, 7 in one room. And he was inc just amazed about how much we've grown and how much the community is uh, diverse and so, there's so many interests. And he was trying to say like in one room there are people getting a ham license. In the next room they were like teaching women how to jimmy car doors open. And he was trying to explain it to his dad, who was, used to be a police officer, and his dad's brain just couldn't contain it. It, just, it didn't. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're talking about, son. But <clears throat> along the last 27 years of our growth, um, we've also realized that we're aging. And as we bring in new generations of hackers, we're starting to lose the old generation of hackers. And yeah, it <laughs> sucks. The first person that figures out how to stop aging, I'm in line to buy your secret. Black badge. Yeah, blip. Well, that's biohacking village, right? Get on it, guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> My knees are only going to last so long. Um, so anyway, I would really appreciate it um, if everyone uh, would raise your badge and join me in a moment of silence. Uh, to remember our friends who are just, they're no longer with us. So just a moment of silence for our fallen hacker comrades and to respect them by continuing to explore and hack all of the things. So That's not quite silence, but I'll go with it. Yeah. All right, let's get this going. We have two people we want to call out. Our first brother in arms, Lockheed, who was instrumental in creating the DEF CON knock 
in the traditions and the infrastructure. And he was the leader of the DEF CON NOC for over 20 years. Um, and though Locke had retired, he is still really with us in spirit and he really was a huge influence. Nothing phased him. Um, he was unflappable and friendly. And it's funny how the tone of the conference was really set in those early years and he was really instrumental in setting that. And also, unfortunately, we lost uh, Tuna, hugely contributory. You don't see this because it's behind the scenes, but he was on our uh, CFP review team and man, he would just grind out quality CFP reviews. So he had a large part to do with the CFP selection. And same thing, just his energy uh, was really incredible. And so we just want to honor them by continuing to grow and, uh, and make DEF CON a really welcoming place. And basically, you know, honor their contributions by um, tearing shit up and uh, looking forward. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not crying, you're crying. Oh man, emotional. Yeah, it's allergies. All right. So, the badge. The badge was the shit. I'd like to introduce the creator, the designer of the badge, Joe Grand, AKA Kingpin. Just like his badges, it'll make your head spin. Thank you, please, no applause. <laughs> I can't move around. This is really awkward. Um, so you might have noticed that you have a badge, most of you, because we actually ran out. We made 26,500 human, which means we had more than that at DEF CON this year. We had a few thousand inhuman, but that's crazy. Um, how many of you guys participated in the badge quest, sort of the challenge with the badge? How about over there in that left-hand corner? Can you hear us back there? Over the high. Okay, good. So you can. That's like, that's a lot. That's probably what, like 20% or something. Like, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so I figured, I figured I'd give a little bit of, of detail. Um, all the design details are on, the, uh, are on my website, on the uh, DEF CON media forum or uh, media server. Um, but I just wanted to clarify a few things. There's a lot of rumors, and some of them were intentionally placed, I guess, by people playing the game. Uh, I like but, the one. So the badges have a transmission range of about a foot. <laughs> yeah. But people are like, if I turn it over backwards and I hold my backwards to your backwards, it's a double secret transmission. <laughs> or, you have to, or you have to kiss them together. Oh, you have to kiss them together. And then I saw a rumor on Twitter, it's like, no, you have to actually polish them. <laughs> 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 so I will, I will dispel all of those myths and rumors. Um, the technology we used, NFMI, is a near field magnetic induction. You don't have to hold them together. You can be probably about a foot apart. Pretty cool. Uh, very little, if, if any, RF signature. Um, for the quest, there were seven different states. And the, the way that your LEDs are flashing uh, will show the state. And it actually spells out this, the different states as D, E, F, C, O, N in the lights. You can figure out what those mean, or you can look in the, in the slides to, to see it. Um, there's five magic tokens. So if you look at the, state, uh, at the state diagram, oh, that's me. OK, so now if you look. Um, we, you know, we start off, you can communicate with anybody that brings you to the first state. Then you have to find the goons in the different areas. So you attend a talk, you go to a, a village, you go to the contest, you go to a party, you go to an art or entertainment exhibit, you find goons in those areas and you scan the magic tokens, which don't look like normal badges. They have a different stone on them. And that's how you can tell that that goon has what you need. You can do those in any order. And then you progress to the final state, which, which I call state N, and what you need there is the group chat. So you didn't have to run around and talk to anybody before that, but it's awesome that you did because I know a lot of you met new friends and stuff, which is cool. Um, oh yeah, actually, well, I know a few people tweeted me, so let's see, how many other people made new friends by doing this contest, or the, you know, the quest? Woo! That's a lot of new friends. Yeah, cool. Um, so. The final one, you have to get one of every color gemstone. Not every badge, but every color gemstone, either all together or, or one by one. I call that group chat. And when you do that, then you win the game. You win the quest. And, and um, what, what, hap I, what happened? Well, should I spoil that? I wanted to check. Like, uh, should I spoil the, the end? Yeah, because it's sort of over. How okay. Many, how many group chat successes do we know of? Oh, good question. Yeah, who solved the entire quest? Who completed the quest? Without, without, without cheating. 
<laughs> no, well, you know, <laughs> well, cheating counts. It's DEF CON. Cheating counts. Keep your hands back up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, God, okay. <laughs> so that's, that's quite a few. All right, so when you, when you complete your quest, you get, a little, you get a little Rick roll, right? We all need a little Rick Astley in our, in our life. And um, then the UART interface that gives you a command prompt and you can interact with the badge gives you some extra commands, some art commands, and then some things you can mess around with the radio and troll other people and stuff, which I know some people did. Um, so anyway, that's that. The Uber badge, I just wanted to mention, these are uh, the same as the other types of badges, but they have a dyed black quartz crystal with laser engraving of serial numbers, so maybe slightly harder to counterfeit, even though I know we saw some amazing counterfeits of these badges already. Uh, and the main thing is that these are hackable for later, so don't forget that. You know, you have one. All the documentation, again, is available. You can write your own code. You can do something cool, do some covert communication, do something, or hang it on your wall, but it doesn't have to, you know, go on eBay or go in the trash or anything. Like, you can still do something with it. Um, I did want to mention a few crazy hacks. So people right away started dumping the code off of these things, patching the code to skip through states without even knowing anything about the communication method, just like sticking it into Ghidra and reverse engineering it, which is pretty cool. Uh, somebody wrote some code, they call it the jackpot code, that they could just hold up to any badge and it would just unlock everything, which is cool. Super cool way to just like, it's like in Mario, you go through the pipe and you come out and you're done. Like that's pretty cool. Um, how many, of you, how many of you guys looked at the, art, the interactive artwork in the Chill Out Lounge where you could scan your badge? Yeah, there was a lot of people in line, so it must have just been you guys the whole time, like, cycling through. Um, so this, this uh, was, a, like, a last-minute thing that we thought it would be cool if we could scan our badge and see the state of the badge, see how you're doing in the, in the event. I mean, by last minute, it means it was being yeah. built two days in advance. Yeah, it was, like, Thursday. Yeah. We f finished it Thursday. And the main people behind that, I have to shout out to, uh, to Zebler. Um, and David Dolan, who worked behind the scenes to do all the crazy video mapping stuff, and this was thrown at them, and it was, it was not good, and I'm glad I actually got to meet them, because they turned out to be really nice, but I know they didn't like me, uh, you know, <laughs> over email. <laughs> I apologize profus profusely. Um, so I do want to say, too, we tried a lot of new things, right? We decided to use these lanyard straps to mount things. Um, we learned a lot about kind of the human condition, human nature, and uh, we were sort of curious if you learned anything at DEF CON, related to the badge or not, right? Because DEF CON's all about learning. We tried new things. Some of them maybe worked out a little better than others, like some antennas fell off, but you could go repair those. Uh, but that's part of the process for us as well as you. You know, we're trying new things. So I'm curious, like, did anyone learn anything new at DEF CON? Yeah, yeah okay. Probably everyone. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Cool. Um, okay, so with that, I want to say that all of the enthusiasm around the, the badge quest, the excitement, people coming up, asking questions, posting pictures, tweeting, whatever, seeing groups of people working together was really just, to me it was amazing and it was contagious to kind of see that excitement. Uh, and none of that would have been possible without all of the goons that helped do the quest, uh, everyone behind the scenes, and of course all of you that played. So thank you for that. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what next year will bring. So. Oh, wait, ask about yeah. Okay. I'm still here. <laughs> DT wanted me to ask you what you thought of this like new attempt of adding some soft, you know, jewelry to your to your wardrobe for DEF CON. Did you like the gemstone? Wow. It was really a we didn't know what we didn't know what people would make of it. It was a big roll of the dice. We're like, we're kind of moving it up the stack here on your lanyard. Yeah. And we weren't quite sure if people wanted like that hard, crazy circuit board techno or if we could go the, you know, you can see it, but you're not quite sure what's going on. Yeah, but it's also pretty cool to see 30, 28,000 something hackers all wearing gemstones. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty crazy. Cool. Ha, we got you. You could go by your local New Age store and be like, check this out, hand cut Brazilian quartz crystal. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks again. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start going through the various departments. You're going to get a quick report on what's been happening, what it takes to, to run the show, and what's happened at the show. So next up, I'm going to introduce you to the Queen Bee of Call for Papers, Nikita, uh, who runs the whole department. Thank you. Nikita. Can you, can you see me? <laughs> um, Queen Bee is funny. Um, I'm not the Beyonce, but I'll take... Cardi B of DEF CON, so. <laughs> Cardi um, B. 
So uh, bear with me a moment. I'm going to do a little strong Britney moment. Um, I wanted to start off by saying a few things about uh, Tuna. Um, on June 29th, the community lost someone that truly embodied the word hacker. Uh, King Tuna, Terrence Garo, he hacked everything. He was a huge contributor to the CFP board. He wanted to make the world more secure. He lived every minute of his 33 lives exactly the way he wanted. Everyone that met him loved him. He was a son, a brother, an uncle, a husband, and a hacker. He was infuriating and endearing. He was honest and he was shady and he was a true friend. And we'll miss Terry every day. So thank you. <laughs> All right, strong written. <laughs> Um, we had 26 CFP mem review members um, reviewing for six months. We started about in January, um, more than 500 submissions. We had a 10% increase for those who um, marked themselves identifying as female on the applications. <laughs> 70 75% are new speakers to DEF CON. We really like to encourage that in our community. Um, just slightly over 45% released um, tools and exploits. And um, we hope that you appreciate our talks. And if you have any um, feedback, to feedback at talks at DEF org. Yes, um, or uh, feedback at DEF CON, so let us know if you have feedback on the talks. One thing that we also did this year that was new, um, we have been paying three nights hotel for the primary speaker of the um, presentation. So if you're accepted, you can come to DEF CON, get your badge, get your honorarium, and also have three nights of your hotel stayed for DEF CON, which we're hoping will help contribute uh, to the community and allow more underrepresented people to make it to con people who may not you know have a corporate budget behind them yet we want to appreciate our speakers and get more of you guys here <laughs> on that note of um, we want everyone to feel welcome in our family so Sometimes when we do talks, we, we do mess up and we do appreciate the feedback and we hear it. We did hear complaints about the unofficial DC 101 uh, new panel this year. And um, I wanted to say we heard you, we are sorry, and we will do better next time. So thank you all and uh, have a good day. Okay, workshops. This is our third year of workshops and a record year for us um, because we got to basically take over a lot of space at the Flamingo. So where is where's the workshops? Workshops. Who's representing us for workshops? You. Here I am. Hello. What are you doing? Every year they're like, we don't know if you're going to be on stage. Yes. Yes. We'll be on stage. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Megan Totenkoff. I am the department lead for workshops. Uh, how many of you all were able to get into a workshop this year? Oh. Okay. That happens every, like, the second time I've done this, and I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> how many of you attempted to get into a workshop this year? Oh. Okay. So a little bit of background. This is our fifth year doing workshops at DEF CON. Or, uh, sorry, fifth year me running workshops at DEF CON. Um, we started out with maybe 20 sessions that could hold maybe 50 to 60 people. And this year we have 36, 36 sessions and we could hold between 80 and 90 people depending on the room. So we're trying to get more folks in. And also, we are coming up with a better solution than the free-for-all that is the one day for Eventbrite Reg. So we did sell out in less than one minute this year. We had a little bit of a hiccup, but we worked with Eventbrite to fix it. 
We had nearly 2,000 attendees attend workshops this year with 55 instructors. We had more women and underrepresented minorities this year in attendance as well as teaching, so that was really cool to see. <laughs> and our submissions also uh, doubled over last year. So if you ever are interested in teaching a four-hour workshop, keep an eye out for the call for workshops and submit early and submit often. Thank you. Okay, I don't know if, uh, is Mel? No. Oh, you're gonna do it? No? Okay, oh no, not that Mel. <laughs> the other Mel. The Mel that runs press. Um, all right, so I'm going to cover her slides. So apparently this year we had approximately 120 media organizations represented at DEF CON. 20% were new to us um, from 12 different countries and in the end we ended up having to ban one of them for uh, code of conduct privacy violations. So it's never fun kicking them out but The big, new, the big new change you might have noticed, it was kind of a drama thing f for the press department, um, but I don't know if it ever really boiled over into the public, was this year we changed the camera policy. And in the past the issue was you would have one, say, a camera crew from a, a big morning TV show. But it wasn't like one guy. You would get the personality or the talent, you'd get the producer, you'd get the cameraman, you'd get the sound man, you'd get the lighting guy, and you'd have five or six people to do one camera shot. And we started looking at all the media that that produced, the coverage of the show, and we looked at it and we said, is that any different or better or worse than what we're getting? And we realized it was actually worse. Um, the, the short camera snippets were not that positive for us. And so we decided, you know what, how about just, you don't get to have a camera crew anymore. Um, you're not clogging up the hallways with five people uh, and you're not doing the sweeping audience shots. <laughs> and so we spent a lot of time uh, holding the hands explaining like you can bring your iPhone, you can bring a hand camera, but you don't get to bring a camera crew and you know, you can do off-site shooting, you can shoot somewhere else, that's fine, we can help you find a place, but you just can't do it in the middle of say the vendor area and cause a problem. And it led to these really weird interactions where, uh, what do you mean? Um, don't you want coverage? Don't you want us? Like, we're the press. And we'd be like, yeah, but, but you came to us. Like, we didn't go to you. And they're just, their heads don't compute. That's not how it works in that world. So they're like, but, but, but. So anyway, I think the press uh, adapted to that really well. I think so far some of the coverage has been fantastic. And we actually tweeted out one example of how this policy really led to some really, uh, creative but uh, positive coverage of our community. So we're going to stick with that in the next year and see, uh, see how that goes. So I want, to, uh, I want to thank the whole press team. They deal with hundreds of submissions and tons of questions. And the other thing that was new this year was an outgrowth of press is we had a policy group. So if you were interested in policy, we had a subgroup that dealt with nothing but people, representatives, staffers, uh, industry who were interested in policy and we had a miniature sort of invite only policy track for representatives and we've never done that before and that worked out really really well so we're probably going to continue that uh, and try to work with policy folks to get them on side and explain our world to them. I Demo labs. Demo labs. I'm not doing two in a row guys. Who's doing demo labs? Where is he? I'll do it. You'll do it. <laughs> we just talked. To okay. And when he said "fuck it," we'll do it live. He meant it. <laughs> like, I, where, where are all the goons? Where did they they're, go? Oh, they're swimming. Is there a secret goon party like on the <laughs> roof? You're at the pool. The roof. Yeah. So. Um, so we've been doing the de demo labs for a few years now. Um, we just wanted to have a platform for people to show off the tools that they're creating. Um, we 
ask that they be open source um, or community based. Uh, we don't want to shill somebody's product. So uh, we get a great number of submissions on that. It also gives the folks who submitted a talk that, um, that may have only covered a tool um, somewhere to, if they're not selected for the main stage, to have somewhere to show it off. Uh, and then it gives them a significant amount of time to do plenty of demos. Um, but we had nearly 40 demo labs this year um, running six at a time. And uh, I mean, they were just full all the time. Everybody was in there. Um, yeah, did anybody go see a demo lab? I know we were in we were in Planet Hollywood, which meant we were on like basically another planet. But hey, um, but um, no, damn it, guys. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so 150 hours, nearly 150 hours of demos. Uh, it went really, really well. If you have a tool, work on a project, or you're thinking about doing something, please consider um, submitting to the demo labs next year. We'd love to see uh, what you've got to bring to the table. It's you, support line. It's either, it's either Ada or CJ. Okay. It's CJ. Every year, every year DEF CON gets bigger and every year we get more and more interesting things going on and we try to respond to that by adapting and the helpline was one of the areas we tried to adapt in. We know there are members of the community that need help and we figured this was a good way to work and the stats here show that it is doing good and we would like feedback on how we can do better. So a total of 29 calls came in during con. There were 12 code of conduct reports pushed through, all of which will be investigated, all of which will be acted on. There were five referrals to trained paraprofessional counsellors, one legal issue, and one person trapped back of house. <laughs> well, what we expect to happen is, um, as the community, as people get comfortable using these mechanisms, what we're trying to do is be really transparent here because if you see we're doing something, you're more likely to use the system and trust the system. And so we expect numbers to increase every year, not necessarily because we're getting worse, but because people are getting um, confidence in the system. And so I'm hoping in a two or three years, we'll have reached our steady state. Um, where everybody f feels that, uh, you know, their complaints are taken seriously and we have mechanisms to, to help you out. So, you know, sometimes when I see numbers, if they go up, I actually get excited because that means the system's being used uh, and it's working. So, some of the stuff that would normally go in the transparency report, I just read out from the helpline because we're moving things across people feel more comfortable in reporting through that mechanism. So you may see some things change, some things aren't on the report that were on there before. Um, this is now the second year of having a, a full formal transparency report and as Jeff just mentioned, the numbers are bigger, but in some ways uh, the numbers are better. So uh, we had six reports of harassment, five medical incidents and a medical incident is something where we have to call paramedics or, or someone more to come and deal with it. Uh, two reports of theft slash loss. Uh, three people were banned and trespassed from the property. We had two pieces of ceiling falling down this year, <laughs> which... <laughs> Sorry. Which that's is a hundred percent increase on last year. Yeah, 50, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we foiled two attacks on the casino this year, not just one. So we're getting better at some things. <laughs> we, we narrowly avoided one biblical grasshopper plague. <laughs> <laughs> We issued two warnings to our staff, so to be clear, our staff are held at a high level of standard 
if you have an issue with our staff, report it. They will be dealt with. There is no room for goons who don't respect the community. Following on from that, we fired a staff member this year who did not respect the community. He was trespassed from the property and banned for life. We're yeah. It's kind of an odd thing to clap, like it's yeah. sad, but yeah. uh, <laughs> but it's you know it shows nobody is above the law. At the end of the day, we all follow the same policies. We had five complaints of drunken sorts. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> we had five reports of drunken swordly. We had five photo policy complaints. And I saw a lot of traffic about this on Twitter. Um, we do take these very seriously. Melanie and her department work really hard to make sure that press follow the rules. And we also make sure that attendees follow the rules. If people are violating the policy, tell us. If you feel uncomfortable with what someone's doing with a camera, Tell us, and we will do something about it. One media company was ejected because they couldn't follow the rules. We had 11 reports of safety or security issues relating to the hotel. And then the last one is somewhat of an embarrassment. Um, we sort of a, failed at a troll attempt at uh, giving out a uh, black badge raffle and <laughs> while in some regards it was funny I think a lot of people were disappointed by it and that's not really the, the, uh, the best outcome the kid. Yeah. Um, so we apologize for that uh, we will try to troll harder but safer <laughs> When you consider the increase of attendees we have here, these numbers both represent more people coming forward and talking about issues, but also there is not a step change increase in problems. That's great. You guys did sure keep me busy all con, and I'm, I've been running around like crazy, but it actually has probably been one of the safest cons I've attended. And I would actually like to give a shout out to the Caesar security folks who helped us with numerous incidents and who also were so understanding that hackers will be hackers. And as a result, many of you played with things, maybe crossed a few lines, but if it wasn't anything malicious, you'll have noticed nothing bad happened. And that's because Caesars understands, and for that I thank them. Okay, so how many of you have installed the Hacker Tracker tool? Woo! Fantastic. Um, that last announcement about the black badge, don't, don't listen to that announcement. That was a mistake. <laughs> that was a. <laughs> anyway. You mean the raffle is on? The raffle is on. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, so do we have uh, somebody from the info booth who'd like to talk about their project? It's us again. Where's info booth? You've got it. I guess it's me. It's little, little Bruiser from info booth. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Hacker Tracker is the official DEF CON app. Uh, the <laughs> development team is part of info booth. So, if you've installed it, we had about. 7,500 Android downloads over Con and uh, iOS. I don't have specific numbers, but it's relatively close to that as well. So a lot of people are skeptical to download the app because it's called Hacker Tracker, uh, <laughs> rightfully so. But no, it, it, it's really good. Uh, it gives all the schedule, and we even had the raffle 
talk on it for a brief period of time. <laughs> So we also apologize for that because, you know, we kind of overstepped, so. <laughs> no, but I just want to thank the InfoBooth team, uh, all the great work they've done. And, you know, you, how many actually visited a booth in one of the several properties this time? It's great. You guys always come and ask great questions, and we appreciate it. And as I said in the, in the program, we really do know where all the restrooms are located. You also feed into the DC. Uh, yes, that's very, uh, no, we don't do the DCTV, but the info.defcon.org is run with the same platform as the Hacker Tracker app. So the, what we were displaying at every booth is the same information that's displayed on the apps. So we have the integrated back end with that, with DT's help getting us caught up there. Cool, cool. So, yeah. Right on. Cool, thank you. All right, one of the big parts of DEF CON is the network, and to talk about it, we have Louise. Thanks, DT. Hello, everyone. Um, I have problems with, like, podium mics. I feel like Ricky Bobby. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> so if you don't hear me, I, I'll wait the mic. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I'm going to go through the usual knock stats and what we do and not and stuff like that. <laughs> if you didn't notice, uh, last year we had a theme that was Guy Fieri. This year we changed a little bit. It's, it was Nicolas Cage. Uh, so if you, that, that was a transformation thing for us. <laughs> but anyhow, um, we, I recycled the slides from last year totally uh, because it's very similar what we do. The difference is that because of the number of properties, we arrived here, or Mac, uh, who's the other lead for, for the knock, he arrived here on Thursday, two weeks ago almost, or 12 days ago, um, to start working on this. But pretty much Friday, Saturday, do all the back of the house, IDFs, MDFs, connection between the, all, the, all of the hotels. I'm not going to bore you and read all about it. We're going to post the, this later. You can go through. Green is when we were happy, and red is kind of like was a little touchy. Uh, but some of the highlights there is that we got most of the stuff running by Sunday, like the core and IDFs. Um, mostly important, Wi-Fi Reg uh, was up by Sunday night, which was a record, record, record time. Do not expect that next year, just in case. <laughs> uh, but it was, uh, we'll get there. Okay. How many people used it? I think it was about uh, 2,000 registered. But a lot of people also use DEF CON, DEF CON, which is the default. And there's no problem with that. I'm going to explain that a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, it was up, right? But it's funny, I land here on Saturday because I'm lazy and Mac has been here since uh, Thursday and I check in and people are like, is Wi-Fi Reg up? I'm like, not quite yet, but we're going to get there. But it worked out okay. Uh, but you can go through kind of like our timelines. Um, again, green, we were happy. Uh, at night, we're drinking the finest drink of Chicago, which is called Malort. If you haven't, you should try it or not. Uh, Exactly. How to unfriend a, per, uh, a, friend, a person in, in uh, how to unfriend a friend in person? That that's a shot of my lord. Anyhow, um, so we worked mostly here in Paris. Knock was here in Paris. We did Paris Bally's and then Planet Hollywood and Flamingo. Um, other highlights here: we have the call for services this year. Uh, I'm, I bet you we, we can do that better next year. But every time we change a little bit, it's it's tough on us on planning and execution, or meaning everything. Um, and highlights also, Wednesday was the day that everybody's kind of here and they're like, remember the thing I asked you? I need it right now. We try to accommodate and prioritize. Thursday is the day of, remember that thing I forgot to ask you? I need it right now. So well, we got it done. Uh, by Friday, everything was okay. Uh, Saturday was a busy day. Um, most of the stuff worked. Some workshops we had to tear it down, bring stuff back to the knock. We had our knock talk. If you attended, I hope you enjoyed. We went a little deeper on what we're talking here. And later on, one of our team members did Drunk Hacker H History. 
he did not win, but he did well. Um, they're tearing down right now. That's why I'm here. They're working. Uh, so big hand for those guys who are doing the hard work, please. Thank you. And tomorrow and Tuesday, we had some, some people staying through Tuesday just to make sure everything goes to the right place. And then we go to like a month detox or something like that. So some of you ask us, like, what do you find when you're like patching cables and things like that? So that's one of the pockets in one of the hotels. You can find a little bit of everything there. Um, one has a fork. And the other one has the quesadilla, so I think the person <laughs> saved some food for later. Might have been Nick Cage, I don't know. Bandwidth-wise, usually it's a big issue for us. This time around it wasn't. Thank you, DT and Linda. Um, that means use more next year. And then I'll bug him. But yeah, we had uh, 900 megabits per second for the first time, which is more than double that we had last year. Um, and you guys did well, so thank you for that. Uh, some other stats. I think the most important here is the one on the bottom left. Is it? Yes. So yellow is the DEF CON secure network. So about 90%, if not more, of you used the secure Wi-Fi network with 802.1x and WPA2 enterprise. Uh, a few like 10% or less is the open Wi-Fi. So big shout out for that for you guys. So cool. I hope it worked out OK. I know it could be spotty in some places, but we tried to cover the whole thing, but not the casino. Um, very important. Somebody sent us a tweet saying, this is not, your, is like Wi-Fi down. I'm like, what's the location? And they're like, well, we're by, at Bally's by the elevators. I'm like, yeah, it kind of like doesn't work there. It's casino area. We are not allowed to be there. Challenges, timing, right? The bigger we get, uh, more proper, not the bigger, bigger is not a problem, but more properties cause, like bring more complexity uh, to the whole thing. But Everything worked out pretty okay. Uh, it's just like when we're hearing the knock and it's like, oh, an AP went down in Flamingo. Like somebody's like, I'll go, and they go, not me. So thanks <laughs> to the team again. Um, and what did go well, this is the first slide for this year. Uh, obviously, I have an awesome team. Uh, great interaction with all the departments. I know I'm, I could be a pain to ask to ask people like for stuff way beforehand, just because we have to coordinate with the hotel to to get patches and for them to be prepared to cater what we need. Uh, so I appreciate that for those that sent stuff on time. For those that didn't, I also appreciate you because sometimes we just know stuff after like everything is going on, right? But we sort of plan for that. Um, 802.1x is also like uh, all, the way to use secure Wi-Fi is also sometimes a challenge for us because people don't understand and you technically really don't have to. But uh, we're trying like along for the past few years we've been trying to make it easier and easier for you. So it was the, the Apple profile. Uh, this year CRV calling in the knock. He went out of his way and he created the Android app. That way you don't get super freaked out when like you're downloading a cert and it says oh we're gonna read your stuff no we don't do that it's just like a warning that uh, Android has so that's a way to kind of like bundle that in a way that is verifiable and trusted which also uh, was integrated into the hacker tracker app for Android and it was all automatic there we go making it easy for you guys right and also on Sunday when I was like, is Wi-Fi Reg up? Is Wi-Fi Reg up? Like we're like, yeah, it's up. It's like good times. And then somebody says, it doesn't work on, Cro on Chromebooks. So I had C75 and John, and John in the knock that they spent probably the whole night and a little bit of the morning saying, we're going to make this work. Because we couldn't find anywhere on the internet how to, without having an MDM solution to make this work, they went out of their ways, their way, and made made that work. So big props to these three guys. 
So pretty much we lay the network for everything that is being used here that uses IP. No, we don't have IPv6 yet. That was a question that we had because there is no way that we can block uh, router advertisements and things like that that I don't know because it's been a while. I'm just a manager. Um, we have a 10 gig backbone, 900 megabits per second uplink. Again, you didn't use it all. Now he's not going to give you more. Use it next year, right? Let's <laughs> max that out. Uh, is a layer two connection to from Paris to Planet Hollywood. Core is in Planet Hollywood, uh, and an IPsec tunnel to Flamingo. This is the gear that we use. You can read later uh, the numbers that you like. A uh, lot of traffic, 12 terabits per terabytes per second total as of like 1 p.m. today. Um, lots of big numbers there. Uh, you can go through that. Uh, interesting points here are uh, a little less of wireless users than last year uh, and a little bit less of uh, different MAC addresses. So thanks for stop spoofing or creating like random MAC addresses just to try to mess with things. A um, little more traffic uh, compared to last year on the media server that you can download stuff. At certain points in time we saw a lot of people downloading a bunch of stuff like who's this user? So that was kind of cool. Um, I want to thank the NOT team. I know I did that but please another hand for these guys. It's, they're awesome. And thanks to everyone here. Uh, DT, he listens to a lot of stuff that I have to complain. Uh, sometimes he avoids me, but that's okay. That's what bosses, good bosses sometimes do. Uh, Nikita for getting us in the right track uh, on everything, but pretty much the knock location and our talk yesterday that was well received. Linda for accommodating everything from trash cans in the knock to everything else. Will for getting what we need. QM for delivering stuff on time, Caesars IT and Encore, these guys are rock stars for us. Without them, we couldn't do stuff on time at all. Um, Sully's bar staff for keeping us on track. The high, high roller at the link was fun, 28 minutes of drinks. Uh, yeah, it breaks you on Sunday. Um, the usual guys who brings a couple of snacks, they've worked before at a, at a call center and stuff, so they appreciate what we do. I know a bunch of you do, and that's greatly appreciated. Um, the other departments were doing the things that I asked them to do, sometimes on time, so I appreciate that. You, but mostly important, Locke, who was our lead, and um, integrity, accountability professionalism working here for you guys came from him <laughs> thanks everyone who watched uh, defcon tv is anybody, is this the first time you've left your hotel room? And you just, <laughs> just uh, stayed there the whole time. Yeah, anybody in the room right now, can you hear us? Just yell. There they are. Okay. Okay, let's hear about the fantastic video man. Here we go. Let's hear about this year's fantastic DC TV. Hi, folks. I'm Video Man. I'm Seraph. And we get up so you don't have to. <laughs> you can get room service and watch that first talk in the morning. Yeah. Thank the whole team, right? We're, we're not, just, not just us, but it's a whole team of people that run this now. Uh, the source of knowledge, the guys in the cameras here and the feeds over here, they provide all the video for us, so big, big plan of applause to them. Uh, we actually do internal streaming to all seven properties that are across the strip here. So 26 channels across seven hotels this year. So all of the hotels are part of the DEF CON hotel block. Uh, a whole lot of IPSEC tunnels and internet and things to make that happen. Uh, our team, 
wound up making 22 visits to these various hotels to get things hooked up. Um, and you know, thanks to step counters, um, the aggregate across the team was 168 miles of walking and pounding pavement through back hallways of hotels, running past security, uh, et cetera. Um. Much like the knock, if you tweet us, we will respond. Uh, and, and, you're, and you're quick to let us know if something goes wrong. <laughs> Which can be a blessing or a curse. So these were the seven hotels we're in. It was about 30,000 television sets. Um, <clears throat> we had two streams to the internet, track uh, one, DC 101 on Thursday, uh, track four for the rest of it. We actually had over 10,000 views of the internet streams. So for the people who were not able to be here with us in person, they were here in spirit. And we did get a number of tweets of people saying, hey, thank you for doing this. Thanks for having this, the tracks up on the internet because I couldn't be there this, this year because of X, Y, or Z. So that was, that was great. So video and myself, video and myself uh, this is our team over here. If you guys can stand up. Uh, returning. We've got, sandwich, we've got Sandwich, Ghost Pepper, and Eagle One. And we'd like to thank our new uh, rock star, uh, Robin's BS, or Robin BS. Uh, we'd also like to give out a special thanks to Kevin, Squeak, and the Defcon Knock, because all these people help us make it happen. Couldn't have done it without you. So check out, we'll be doing it again next year at Defcon TV, dctv.defcon.org. Yeah, and um, we're hoping to broadcast to the same seven hotels next year. So if you want to get a room and you want to have a little bit of uh, join the room con, which was a hashtag we created this year, please do so. Thank you. This is a big one. This is Villages. Villages. Zance. Zant, do it. Thank you, sir. And it was a, I'd like to, I'd just like to call out uh, Zant for a double thanks. Um, he couldn't make it to DEF CON China, but he was still involved in all the villages for DEF CON China. So we couldn't thank him there. So we're going to double thank you here. Thank you, man. I'm still just trying to figure out why I'm here. Somebody told me there was free tequila. No, there is, now, is second that one a... is, DT, I did hear a rumor. Villages need more space, just saying. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I've heard. All right, so real quick. You may have noticed that we had some villages around the con. There was 32 in total. 11 of them were new. Uh, let me know what you thought at villages.defcon.org. Other than that, I would just like to thank all the village leads for all the work that they do to help me make my job easier. And then I would like to thank all of my village goons for all they did to make it easier for you guys to get around. With a special shout out to uh, Fox, Runner Up, Honey, and Amazar for attempting to keep me on task. <laughs> Other than that, um, that's about all I really got. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed the villages and learned a little bit. I know we're trying to grow them all, like I said, but thanks for coming. Okay, we've got a little bit of some statistics. We've got data duplication village. Are they packing up? DDV? Okay, so this is something that we started years ago. Um, it was originally sources from the infocon.org uh, video archive, uh, something I do with all my spare time. <laughs> uh, I collect all the videos I can find from every hacker conference. Um, and then we also have some old hash tables, rainbow tables, and some word lists and other things. Um, so here are our statistics. This year we managed to dupe over 500 six terabyte hard drives, which is a lot. Um, and you can see over here on the right hand side, InfoCon is about half, 230 copies. People like getting new uh, updates of different cons. But I'm really surprised people still really like their rainbow tables. But I can understand downloading five terabytes each, um, that takes a while. And a lot of people in other countries don't have that kind of bandwidth or time. Uh, or maybe they're on a metered connection. And so it's really cool that we make it possible for people to grab data really quickly. 
What I'd love to see in the future is more data sets and more people bringing their own data sets. Like it would have been really cool um, to see some other big dumps there. Uh, so maybe in the future we're going to try to make that easier for people to bring and contribute their own data. So um, by show of hands, who here, any of the 500 people participate in the data duplication village? Okay, back there. Um, all these, the rainbow tables weren't on the con network, but all the infocon data every year is on the con network. So if you don't want to bring a hard drive, you can always run with wget. All right, we're going to grow that next year. Next up, we've got vendors. Who wants to represent vendors? Come on down. Dun dun dun. Hi, DEFCON. I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin. <laughs> I'm the team lead for, uh, for vendors, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the vendors themselves. So this is a list of the vendors that we did have, and uh, we really love having smaller companies come in and sell their products, the type of products that you want to buy from you know, the mom and pop shops or the, you know, not the Amazons of the world, essentially. Uh, you know, we love those types of vendors. So here I actually bought something from vendors. Yeah. We had a lot of people buy things from vendors and that's really awesome. I know that they appreciate it. We loved having you guys in there. Our vendor goons um, really appreciate them. Big shout out to all of them for helping the vendors get set up and helping you guys find your way. Um, I think the big thing that I want to say is that if you have any feedback for us as, as the attendees or if you know of any vendors that you'd like to see inside of our vendors areas, please let us know. You can get a hold of us at uh, vendors at DEF .org. Shoot us an email. Give us any feedback that you might have and uh, we definitely want to try to get better. We, try, we want to grow but we want to grow in a way that DEF CON wants. We want to grow in our spirit. And so if you know anybody or have anything to send us, Absolutely. Let us know. Especially and, uh, shady stuff. We want shady stuff. Yeah. <laughs> shady yeah. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get some umbrellas, yeah. right? That's shady. Well, we, we, we had this epiphany when I was trying to describe uh, to a friend. It's like, well, what we want there. And I'm like, well, basically, stuff that you only want to buy in person, you know, with cash. Right. <laughs> you know, like nothing you'd want to actually put your name on on Amazon. And it was like, aha, that's what people want. <laughs> <laughs> Well, awesome. Uh, get that feedback off to us, and uh, we'll try to make next year just as good and better. Thanks a lot. Gabe, okay, arts and entertainment, the people that – are they awake? Yeah. <laughs> Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, I don't have any slides. Well, I do have slides. I didn't actually make the slide, but uh, all right, we have slides. So uh, I got some stats I want to pull up here. Uh, really, uh, who went to the official DEF CON parties that were in track one over here, in Napoleon's out there, and in the Planet Hollywood uh, Night Gallery Nightclub? That's really cool, that's really cool. Did you like the nightclub space? This is our first year doing something like that that's outside of a traditional ballroom. Was that good? So uh, some stats, uh, we had about 75 performers. These are DJs, band members, etc. cetera. Uh, supported by my team of eight goons and 17 other staff members that helped us with decor, sound, lighting. Uh, also want to shout out to Soma.fm who does all of our chill out space all day long. And uh, everything that was in the chill out space was broadcast live on Soma.fm. And there is a DEF CON channel that you can tune into all year round uh, after the con ends there too. I want to thank some people. Uh, the hotel, uh, Wendy, has been awesome uh, for us. Uh, Encore, Christina, she's really helped us out. I want to thank Linda and Janet from the DEF CON office. We can't do anything without them. Uh, we had uh, 42 hours of entertainment across those three properties and across three nights. Uh, and the official soundtrack, I want to talk about that. You can download that for free from the DEF CON media server. If you want to also, you can go to our Bandcamp site, uh, defconcommunications.bandcamp.com. 100% of the proceeds uh, that you donate through there uh, will go to the EFF. And if you have feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Our Twitter account is defcon underscore music. 
Thanks, everybody. All right, let's get some parties. Who went to a party? More importantly, who found the party token? Yeah. Hi. I'm Existence, and I'm your responsible adult for nighttime and run the parties and meetups at DEF CON. I don't drink, so that's why I'm responsible. We had some absolutely fantastic meetups with our huge attendance and amazing parties this year and I hope to go even bigger and better next year. I want to shout out to some of the meetups that were new. We even had some new people to DEF CON that threw a great meetup, so I want to shout out to them. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you all for coming out and participating though. Special shout out to Pyro, who's retiring this year, and my goons. <laughs> and my goons who helped make this a success. I have a very small team, uh, but we made it happen anyway. If you have any feedback or suggestions for parties, please email me at parties at defcon.org. And uh, if you want to throw a party, please get in touch with me. Let's make it happen next year. Thanks, everyone, and see you next year. Contests and events. That's right. Breathe it in. Good lord. Um, so as you can see, there's uh, there's quite a few uh, contests and events that are on this slide. Um, there's also some random ones that that grow organically throughout the conference. Uh, sometimes they become uh, you know official contests later. Yeah, there is Dino Sumo Wrestling, but that's unofficial and has been unofficial for several years. We're, we'll work on it. It's fine. Um, so yeah, if you, um, let me see, how many people participated in a contest or event out here? Anyone? All right, awesome. So um, I guess first and foremost, um, I'd like to thank the organizers of, of these contests. Uh, they put in a significant amount of time. I mean, they start emailing me, uh, whether I like it or not, in January uh, about what they're going to do uh, the coming year. And it's an incredible amount of effort just to make sure that you guys are entertained. So thank you very much to them. Um, also, I'd like to thank the contest and event goons. Uh, we have an incredibly difficult job of sitting on a couch in the contest area and watching the contest take place. It's hard. Somebody's got to do it, so it's us. So thanks, guys. All right, if you are interested in running uh, an event or a contest, please reach out to me. If you've got some crazy idea that you think is just way too weird, we'll never do it, um, we might just do it. So please uh, hit us up, contests at defcon.org, or hit me up on the Twitters, uh, grifter801. Um, and we'll see what we can make happen. But let's get to uh, the black badges, right? So, so of all of the contests you saw on that slide, only nine of those contests actually receive black badges. So it's incredibly stiff competition. What we look for in a black badge contest is first and foremost, difficulty, right? We want you to work for it. If you're getting into DEF CON free for life, you better bring it. And so we want something that's going to make you um, suffer or at least uh, eat up a fair amount of your weekend just crushing puzzles or uh, putting together a ridiculous pretext um, and just coming at it full force. So uh, this first contest I'm going to bring to the stage is one of the longer running contests. They are near and dear to my heart. I think they are near and dear to yours. The room when this contest is taking place is packed. Um, they put in, a s I love you too. I, I do. Um, so, um, Again, they put in a significant amount of effort. They're, uh, they're one of those contests that's planning all year. 
They're celebrating their 10th year this year. Welcome to the stage, the Social Engineering Contest. So 10 years, that's unbelievable, huh? Um, this year we had 11,000 square feet and we still broke fire code by putting people over the floors. <laughs> so yeah, it was a little crazy. And the ceiling. And the, yeah, so the two ceiling tiles that fell, that, that statistic, that was our room. And, and one of them, this is not even a joke, uh, they had tried to repair the ceiling and they left a razor utility knife in the ceiling and it fell through the ceiling tile and cut one of our, one of our people in our room. Did they deserve it? <laughs> no, I don't think she deserved it. She was just standing there looking at a t-shirt and then had a knife run down the back of her arm. Anyhow, so that was pretty, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, that, that actually happened. Uh, real stories. Um, also, uh, the, the kids and teens events, I know uh, that's not the black, the black badge portion of it, but there was just something notable I wanted to, to tell the community. We had a young man who lost his uh, mother last year right before DEF CON. And uh, he, he came and he competed in the teens event. And he said, just for the three days he's here running around, he forgets about losing his mom because of the community and the way you guys accept him and make him feel. So that's a young little 14-year-old uh, young man that's coming to DEF CON and finding a place to really express himself. So I just want to say thank you to all of you that interacted that way. Thank you. Okay, so on to the events. Just a couple stats that are shocking to me. This year, um, our contestants, we have 14 contestants. They spent 874 hours doing OSINT, um, the three weeks before they hand their reports in. And we had 1,120 pages of OSINT submitted. I just don't think they understand. I also have a life and we just do this for fun. But that's a lot of OSINT to read. Um, we had the first time ever in 10 years of running this contest that the, uh, a contestant got a perfect score on the report, right? And uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was possible. Um, especially this year we chose our theme was alcohol, tobacco, and firearm companies in America. <laughs> we thought it would be fitting. And um, first day, man, the firearm companies were shutting us down nonstop. It was like, literally like bang, bang, you're dead. And uh, see what I did there? See what I did there? I'm here all weekend. Um, yeah, you appreciate that. I know. We have the same sense of humor. So, um, but then the second day it wasn't the case, but we had the best, the best thing that happened uh, out of all, of all of the calls was this one um, contestant was using a pretext. Uh, what was the name he was using? Ro Robert Green. And he, and he got caught. Like someone really got suspicious after giving over like flag, 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 flag. And he, call, he hung up, called another uh, part of the, the company and he said, this is Rob Green from IT. And the lady says, Rob Green, you're a damn liar. Click. And just, <laughs> so, so yeah, I got to say, here's what I'm really proud of that. That means that company actually had an email policy where they warned all the other employees about scam calls. That's awesome, right? Yeah. It took us 10 years to get there. It took us 10 years. That's, that's phenomenal. So I'm really happy. Okay, so with, without, without wasting any more time, is this the first time there's a baby on stage at DEF CON? I think mine was on. Oh, yours was on? Okay, I was just curious. I was just curious. So she won the SECTF. No, just kidding. She didn't. <laughs> she didn't. I was just kidding. She came in. Three for life! Yes. <laughs> oh, we should give the black badge to her. She'll be getting in for like 90 years. <laughs> DEF CON 2000. She's still there. Okay. So, um, our second place, our second place winner, well, first time she ever did anything like this. She just started off like three months ago or something in the industry. Sadly, she had to leave for a flight. She was flying back to Australia and didn't want to be late. So she had to run. But uh, she, she came in uh, second place with the perfect report score, um, also with an unbelievable call score. But uh, our first place winner, Alith, is standing here. She uh, competed last year. And uh, another great lesson for us. I'm sorry? Company card. Company card. Yeah. No, what I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to give her a bottle of alcohol, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give her a 10th year SE head award and, and Black... Or, sorry, wow, where am I? DEF CON's going to give her 
a black badge. So. Thank you. Oh, Joe, you even made the badge beautiful. Hang on, I have your badge right here. No, just kidding. <laughs> One last thing. It's also the second year in a row that women dominated the competition. It was the second year in a row that women dominated the competition. Uh, we again have two women in the first and second place, and most of the high, most of the high scores that we had through the competition were all by our our women SE. So good good job. Keep it coming. Thank you. All right, next up we have another long running contest. Uh, the, it's, it's funny that the first two are the ones who start to hit me up in January. Um, this is uh, a contest that has taken many forms over the years. It started out as a troll, essentially, right? Uh, and it morphed into something incredible. Uh, so what went from grabbing your, uh, your creds and putting them on a wall on a paper plate in the Alexis Park turned into Capture the Packet. What's up, DEF CON? I'm Riverside. How's it going? Uh, so this year we, uh, we did uh, two packet hacking villages for DEF CON, one in China and one here. But uh, in China it's actually the data packet hacking village because packet hacking village by itself means purse hacking village. Because um, the translation so awesome. But um, I want to really, really thank DEF CON this year because the space was awesome. Um, how many of you got a chance to go out to the village? All right. How many of you got shirts? All right, there were 6,000 shirts given out this year. It was awesome. We really, really uh, had a great time. So um, I just, thanks again to DEF CON. I want to thank all of our staff, our volunteers, our speakers, and the DJs. It was rocking. Uh, we got shut down on YouTube streaming multiple times for violations by accident on the DJs. Oops. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, we, I want to sneak some, some very, very short time in here. I know I got to get off the stage soon. Um, we have amazing people across all of DEF CON and this is an inclusive community and we, we accept everyone. And some of our community have disabilities, um, both physical, mental, we have people of all different shapes and sizes and we include e absolutely everybody. So in, at least in our village we started building a tag for those that want to wear them that's a disability tag that is bright and like that they, people can see it. So if somebody has social anxiety, panic attacks, you can see and you're like, okay, let's get that person help. There's goons all over the place but sometimes in a crowd there's a thing. We ask that the crowd, the group, not use social engineering techniques and use those. If you see it, it's legit. Please try. I know we've talked to DEF CON. They're working on trying to figure out something. Those that want to can. Those that can't, can't. But, um, you know, we have, you know, a ton of different people and we want to make sure everybody can participate equally. So let's, let's work that together as a community. Thank you. So this year's wall of sheep stuff was a bit sparse because, you know, we're getting the open, not the secure network, but um, what we did notice and we kind of pivoted completely, we build, some of you noticed a second projector next to the wall, we call that the sidecar app. Um, since we can't see your encrypted credentials, meaning we're actually doing our legit job, what we can see is your awesome DNS tracking records and all the other things. How many of you by show of hand knows what an HTTP tracker is? Okay. So not many. That means a company is tracking everything that you do. And so we had a flow of all the traffic going across the network. And 50% plus of the DEF CON attendees at any given time were being tracked by another company. A lot. A lot of porn. <laughs> but all those trackers, we were tracking the trackers and watching who, who was doing what. It was awesome to watch. So even though they're not a bunch of stuff on the actual wall list, the traffic is amazing to watch. We had so many people participate. Um, so if you don't know how to deal with that, talk to somebody that raised their hand, that knows how to deal with it, stop getting tracked. Um, let's see. 
the CTP stats um, and CTP this year was crazy. We had lines of people trying to get signed up, go in. We were able to accommodate a ton of people. We did the prelims, the mains, the finals. Um, this year we had 14 categories. We spent, as Grifter said, the entire year. We were, we, some of these challenges we've been working on for multiple years. Some of the challenges are like three, four years in the making to do custom stego and crazy exfiltration techniques and like the stuff that you hear on the scary news, we're throwing that inside of here. So if you're an actual defender or somebody that does threat hunting, this is your bag. It is awesome. And so just to kind of give you an example of like what happened, um, the third place team, Respondo, answered 42% of all of the content in finals. The, Second place team answered 46%, and the first place team who gets the, uh, the wad of cash, two grand, uh, and the, uh, the black badge over here, and hopefully a, a handshake from DT. <laughs> here you go, guys. What was their percentage? 53%. Oh, wow. Broke the 50% mark. First team in a long time. Give them a hand. And they've played multiple times. So thank you all, DEF CON. See ya. All right, uh, the next contest up is uh, one of the side effects of competing in contests here at DEF CON. They're a perfect representation of that. After years and years of slaving away on puzzles and uh, mystery challenges and all things, what the hell is that? Um, they decided maybe we can try our hand at this. And so they created their own. So welcome to the stage. Uh, nope, nope, that's in the wrong spot. Where are you guys? Fire. Dumpster fire. <laughs> We're just gonna bring them up anyway. Hey, whoever's running the thing, leave it off. It's Dungeons at DEF CON. Hello. Uh, we're Dungeons at DEF CON. And uh, what we, so a bunch of us have participated in mystery challenge in years past. And what we've found is there's a lot of really high level, expert level content and contests at DEF CON, which is awesome if you walk in as a high level expert. But what if you're not a high level expert and you want to learn? Well, that's what we created. So Dungeons at DEF CON is a crypto and puzzle solving competition. And the goal is that anyone can walk in off the street and learn how to do this and win. Um, our contestants spent all weekend answering crypto puzzles and solving challenges and learning new things because we are going to guide you through the experience. We're not going to give you the answers, but we will tell you um, tools you can use and ways you can think on how to solve these puzzles. So. Um, first off, we want to give a shout out to the goons and to the villages for being our NPCs. Um, our contest is all we, every year we base it around a different RPG and this year was paranoia themed and they got to send our players on quests that they could earn hints. So um, without any more, we have a couple of winners. First of all, I want to shout out to uh, the Council of Nine. They made it to the end of the competition and were the first ones to, uh, they found lost, got the key and opened the box of treasure. And our overall points winners who get the shiny, shiny black badge is the Fellowship of the Token Ring. This will take a while. Hug them all. That's all right. You want some? Uh, Group hug. Let's just, let's knock this out. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So um, the next contest, I, I feel a little bit bad. Uh, so we had them in the regular contest and events closing and not as a black badge. They actually won a black badge. I had to call them and say, oh, hey, you're going to be in the main closing ceremonies. And, um, and Whitney said, I'm in my car on the way to a storage unit. And then flipped it around and made it back here. So gold bug challenge. Hi, everyone. Um, per DEF CON, I'm losing my voice, as always. Um, so really quickly, uh, the Crypto and Privacy Village um, is a place where crypto means cryptography and privacy is a right. And 
We mean it so much, we said it in neon. So if you had a chance to come by the village, you would see that we had some custom um, via Alibaba signs saying as such. Um, but really, I wanted to say a quick thank you to DEF CON, because without all of you, it would not be possible. And we've been doing this for six years together, and it's getting better every year. Um, but thank you especially to Honey, Zant, and Grifter for all of the support and work that they've done to make the Crypto and Privacy Village successful this year. Um, so uh, it was our sixth year, and we are now officially a 501c3 corporation um, or a nonprofit. And I just wanted to say that we are committed to never taking corporate sponsorship. So you'll know that when we're talking about privacy and cryptography, we will not be. Um, have any sort of conflict of interest. Um, so follow us on Twitter, and um, we're, Zant, we're very happy with our space. I would like to say, like, we felt like we had enough space this year. So um, I'll, I'll now pass it on to Maya and Kevin, who are uh, the Crypto and Privacy Village's contest leads, because we're getting big enough to have that now. So um, as Whitney said, the, the Goldbug Puzzle is part of Crypto Privacy Village. It's the fourth year that the puzzle has been running. It's a cryptography-based puzzle hunt, if you're familiar with like a traditional puzzle hunt. Um, so there's a bunch of different puzzles that teams can solve, um, and, they, and then they kind of solve a meta puzzle at the end, which combines all of them together. Uh, it's the fourth year of the contest, second year black badge, very exciting. Um, we also had puzzles for junior cryptographers available. So if you saw us give you a piece of paper, we weren't, you know, we wanted to get you excited about crypto. Um, we had everything from, you know, simple Caesar ciphers, various kinds of encodings, book ciphers, crosswords, nonograms, uh, and Mandelbrot sets and Riemann zeta functions. So, like, the whole, the whole gamut of cryptography is up for play. Uh, and the prize, which I unfortunately don't have here, is also a, a physical mounted bug, like an actual beetle uh, that, we, that, our, that our winners get. Cool. So this year we had a really good showing. We had 275 teams register. Uh, those 275 teams submitted 2,303 wrong answers and 27 correct answers. So our, our winning team solved eight of the nine puzzles. Um, and we have here Team Goldbugs. We have a representative. Woo! So why don't you come over? And the, so the BBS that hosts all the puzzles is going to be online after the con. So we encourage folks who haven't had a chance to play the games yet uh, to keep going. And remember, there's one left available. So who will be the first to catch the gold bug? Right on. How are you? All right, uh, some people want you to capture a packet, others want you to capture a flag, some just want you to do a puzzle. Um, that's not enough for this next group. Um, and when I mention their name, I expect you to respond correctly. Welcome to the stage, Hack the Planet. Hack the Planet! <laughs> Let's do that again. Hack the motherfucking planet. <laughs> Uh, my name's Bryson. Um, the ICS Village started about six years ago with just a couple of us, I think in the real hacker tradition of just putting some shit together and bringing it here, and they kept tolerating us doing that. We kept coming back year after year. Um, we also just incorporated this year as a nonprofit, so we're now a 501c3 with the mission of providing education and awareness around critical infrastructure security. Um, and we also happen to put on a CTF. Um, our CTF represents over 3,000 hours of work with over 100 challenges. Um, one special call out is one of the challenges has, um, involves a level of exploitation that over 1,000 folks over three years have never been able to solve until today. Um, so that is uh, the iToaster. Um, you can follow it on Twitter. He talks a lot of shit. <laughs> um, and with that, uh, Am I supposed to give like a black badge or something? <laughs> oh. um, if any of you know me, I usually am just told what to do and then I say it, so I'm now going to not give the black badge, but instead recognize third place with Pony IP. <laughs> so
second place, Butter Overflow. And then the team that truly hacked the planet, Team Clarity. I think even though these guys are, are super new to this, you probably know who they are. Um, oh, look, there's Dungeons. It's not them. Where? It is a dumpster fire. All right. Um, anyway, like I said, you probably know who they are. They've been doing it for 25 years. Hacker Jeopardy. Dear Lord. Hey everybody, I'm Lintel. Oh, you know me as the people that caused pain hacker jeopardy 25 years ago. It's his fault. Jeff <laughs> asked him, when. Him and me drinking 25 years ago. Grandpa right. comes with me everywhere we go. Eight but uh, doesn't make me a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this year uh, we had uh, contests at other cons as a precursor to DEF CON. Tour CON, Thought CON, Derby CON, Pack in Paris. So it was an international competition. Everybody came here not to fuck it up on the stage in Las Vegas. Uh, the only casualties I have to report are one team that didn't show up mentally and a ceiling which was much too low. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were the other ones. Sorry about that. Hope the insurance policy covers it. Uh, without any uh, further ado, I will uh, give you your uh, 25th anniversary Hacker Jeopardy champion, the Church of Wi-Fi. <laughs> I just want to say, um, we did this for Tuna. Uh, pouring one out would actually be a sin in the church, so this one's for him. I'm not even gonna try to guess what's on the next slide. I'm over it. <laughs> Whatever. It's all good. Um, so, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, <laughs> that these guys have done this contest. This is the second year. Um, I actually had several people come up to me to tell me specifically about um, how great it had been put together. Um, it ended up on the radar, so I met with the organizers. They walked me through the contest. It's a fairly incredible challenge. I'll let them explain it to you. Open sock. Thanks a lot, Grifter. Um, so, first off, uh, for anybody that uh, doesn't know about Open Sock, so we are very humbly located with the uh, the new but powerful Blue Team Village. Uh, it's the second year for the Village. It's also the second year for OpenSock at DEF CON, but it's actually our first year as an official DEF CON contest. So we couldn't be more excited to be recognized as a Black Badge competition this year. Um, so, so a little bit about OpenSock. We are very, very thrilled to be one of the probably most defensive focused competitions here at DEF CON. Um, we are a live fire incident response and threat hunt simulation. We have a gigantic virtualized corporate environment with everything you can imagine under the sun, from simulated users, email, internet, the whole nine, and then of course, many, many back-to-back -back nation state adversaries just wreaking havoc in this environment. And what we do is we turn several open source threat hunt platforms over to what ended up being nearly 600 of you um, to understand what was taking place inside the environment. So essentially, it's a SOC. And the reason we call it OpenSock is because we very proudly put open source tools at the forefront of this project. So every single one of the platforms that our participants used, Greylog, Collide, OS Query, OSSEC, 
Uh, these are all open source tools, so the participants are getting real hands-on experience with the amount of, the incredible amount of visibility we can deploy in environments with little to no investment and, uh, and track no kidding nation state adversaries. So a cool, really, a few really awesome stats. So if anyone here has ever worked a, uh, an incident response with a non-trivial threat actor, you know how much time can go into something like that, right? I mean, anywhere from 48 to 72 hours, I mean, days, weeks. We had 12 of those type of breaches in this environment at DEF CON. Our participants spend up to 31 consecutive hours working through intrusions in this environment. We had 248 teams, 570 players. Can you imagine the kind of elastic stack you need to support 500 consecutive players? It was, uh, it was a beast. I couldn't have done it without a very large team of uh, awesome folks, threat analysts, security architects, you name it. I've got a lot of support to make this happen. But um, honestly, we want to really thank the Blue Team Village for giving us a really awesome place to run this event. And uh, most of all, I want to thank all of the nearly 600 people that gave us almost their entire con to sit there and play through our scenarios. It was incredible. Um, so our finalists, we took the top 15 teams from the general category, and we let them play through two nation state actors, FIN7 and APT34. And they ran through two simultaneous intrusions, and um, we had some incredible stats. So I'll just go ahead and start with uh, our number three team was Brute Force with 1,735 points. Did an incredible job with only three team members. Second place should have slept in with 1,860 points with only two team members. And then our first place, our first place with five team members, 2,090 points, Walmart greeters. Now, there's one more thing that I want to cover because it's very near and dear to my heart and the hearts of many others that are here with me on stage and those of you that are in the crowd with the Blue Team Village. I want to mention a, uh, a member of the Blue Team Village, the inaugural year last year, um, Nolan Berry. Some of you may know him as Dev Null. Uh, Nolan's no longer with us. He passed away this year. And so we did several things to commemorate the memory of Nolan, including, including the, uh, the badges that you probably see a lot of Blue Team Village members wearing. But we also had a custom scenario in OpenSock called Neutrino Cannon. And what we did was we took many different awesome aspects of Nolan's life, including his previous role as a DNS architect for Rackspace. So we used DNS for our C2 mechanism. And we took many other awesome attributes of Nolan's life and we rolled it into this scenario and we let 600 of you play through it and enjoy an incident response intrusion where you're getting to commemorate a really awesome hacker in this community that we are all very missing uh, this year. So that's all I have. Thank you so much. Anything could be on this next slide. I'm going to go with uh, who's standing near the stage. Uh, so uh, this next contest has been uh, a part of the contest and events uh, family for several years. Uh, they've been a black badge contest for several years, and that's because they bring it. And they also bring it in a way that includes as many people as humanly possible. The challenges are highly technical to um, the absurd. Um, so if players get stuck on something, they can essentially pass and move on to something else. Um, they just might not like what they get. Uh, this year, I walked by and there were people doing burpees and sit-ups and push-ups, and I was like, what the hell is that? And they're like, they're hacking fitness. <laughs> Warlock Games. Hello, DEF CON. It's been an awesome year. It's been an amazing time. So this year for Warlock Games, we did incorporate uh, Hack Fitness. Five events, total of 300 points, where basically you could do push-ups, 
sit-ups, do a full plank, wall sit, burpees, that kind of thing for as much as you can for two minutes. And we actually had some pretty interesting participants that came along and uh, it kind of went a little bit slow in the beginning. I think folks were kind of figuring out what it was, what to do. And then it just took off and it was literally busy the entire time that we were there, literally. Line, ready to go, next person ready to go, doing two at a time, sometimes three at a time, just to get everybody through and they were doing great. The highest score that we got out of this, and we actually had uh, three of them, was 290 points that folks came through and they did these exercises and it was fantastic. So that hack fitness was part of the overall Warlock Games CTF. So we have the physical challenge of lock picks. We do mindless things like putting Legos together for speed. Uh, and then we have the packet analysis, forensics, malware analysis, reverse engineering, binaries, those kinds of things. The teams that you see standing here behind me were our third uh, three teams. They were our finalists. In third place, we had F2TC with a score of 4864. <laughs> our second place team is Ambush with 4934. And it was a fierce competition, literally right down to the very end, taking all things into account. Our finalist. PTFS with 5294. Congratulations, that's our black badge winner. So I'd like to say thank you very much to Grifter, DT, thank you, DEF CON in general. Be fit, stay healthy, stay strong. We look forward to seeing you in DEF CON 28. The next contest doesn't really need any introduction. I will make a comment though about the fact that this year any contest that wasn't located in a village we had over at Planet Hollywood, right? We had a contest stage out there on the mezzanine. We had the contest area just packed with all different kinds of contests and events. Um, this particular contest we put as close to the casino as possible. Um, <laughs> capture the flag. <laughs> Hello, hackers. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we are the order of the overflow. We're back. This is our second year hosting DEF CON CTF. And it is an honor to be here talking to all of you again. Last year, you might remember, uh, I was barely coherent from sleep deprivation. This year is a little better. So we are, as last year, still a bunch of noobs, hackers, engineers, professors, and really very silly people for agreeing to do this, uh, even though it is incredibly uh, touching that we were given this trust, uh, as, as silly as that was. Um, our first DEF CON CTF uh, hosting experience last year, we ruled the CTF with an iron fist. Surveillance was everywhere. <laughs> Cyber citizens were punished harshly for any missteps and the world was fully secure, except for the huge amount of insane hacks carried out by rebel factions among the teams. In the year since then, we've started looking to the future. We have filled our hearts with hope for humanity, and we have decided to lead these hackers into the future, into a world without security vulnerabilities. We could not do this without the support of a lot of people. First of all, Dark Tangent, thank you. You're, You're incredible. <laughs> the Goons, thank you so much for hosting this event, DEF CON, and helping us host this small event, DEF CON CTF Inside It. Uh, the prior DEF CON organizers, so as you know, DEF CON organizers swap out every couple of years. Are the prior DEF CON organizers legit BS? gave us a lot of wisdom and help uh, to help make this event a success. Our families, who haven't seen us almost at all in a very long time and uh, hope to see us at least sleeping next week. And our friends 
who couldn't be here, you're seeing part of the order of the flow behind me. Uh, we also have Dr. Tiffany Bao, who is in China at the moment. Maybe she thought this was DEF CON China weekend. <laughs> uh, and we have Jackie, Debbie, and Jamie back at ASU who make this possible for us to do. So, I was supposed to say all that to that slide. I don't see the slide anyways. Oh, brilliant. All right. So, I'll talk a bit about how uh, the teams show up at DEF CON because you can't have a CTF without the top hackers in the world. So, uh, we, as previous years, decided to make five top events around the world pre-qualifiers uh, plus uh, DEF CON CTF from last year. Um, these events all over the world, some of the best events in CTF, you should go and play them over the next year and join the teams up on stage, up on the contest area. We also ran our own uh, CTF qualifiers in which we created a new category for DEF CON CTF qualifiers, speed run. We watched some uh, amazing hackers solve challenges as quickly as five minutes from release, which was incredible to see. And using this, we amassed a group of participants that represented some of the best hackers on the planet. Out of the 1,200 teams that participated in our qualifiers, estimated 20,000 hackers participating in the qualifiers. We invited 16 teams to join us here at DEF CON Finals. This is them in alphabetical order. They're incredible. As I announce the results, please remember that these are the best hackers on the planet. Well, plus all of you. But these are the best hackers on the planet that also decided to show up to the CTF. So even the last pla place team, they're incredible. They are the last place team at the Olympics. And of course, it only gets even cooler from there. Mentioned quickly about the challenges. We had a lot of firsts this year. Uh, we decided to focus on cutting edge challenges uh, and a spectatability. So we had some very interesting things. We had, I think, the first attack defense challenge running on iOS of uh, iPhone, not Cisco fame. We had an attack defense challenge that was a machine learning classifier. We had a King of the Hill challenge where we handed out the original Xbox to all the teams and had them go at it on a crazy patched up version of Doom. Of course, all the network cheating, all the binary patching that they could imagine. Uh, we had a challenge running on a Lisp machine created in the 1980s or in an emulator thereof. Uh, we, have, we had a lot of really crazy stuff. And the teams really hit it hard. They hacked nonstop from 10 a.m. Friday to 1 p.m. today. They gave it their best. So we'll move on to announcing how they did. So these are the uh, 11 teams that play 6th through 16th from all over the world. Really great hackers, like I said. But of course, we're all interested to see how people did in the top five. So let's see. In fifth place, Macaroni from Italy. In fourth place, AOE from China. In third place, and now they will start coming up. Tea Deliverers from China. In second place, one of the heavy hitters of DEF CON CTF and the CTF community worldwide, awesome team, HitCon 
and VF Kinesis, hailing from Taiwan. In first place, hailing from the United States, multi-time CTF champions, the Platt Parliament of Phoning. The Platt Parliament of Poning, of course, as every year the winner does, wins eight black badges and eight custom DEFCON leather jackets and eternal glory. <laughs> so, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for coming by and watching, rooting for these guys, whoever else. It was an honor hosting this year, and we hope to see you again and have some awesome stuff for you next year. Thank you. Oh, you're oh. As always, we are releasing everything, the full data set, PCAPs, flag submissions, logs, gigabytes and gigabytes of insane stuff uh, after we get a little bit of sleep and scrub some unreleased challenges from uh, the database. And you'll see it all on our Twitter and on the DEF CON website. Thank you. Thank you all. Wait. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait. Look what I've got in here. <laughs> no, no. I think I've got it. I think I might. <coughs> Where? I had a. Um... I had the uh, a winning uh, black badge from the uh, counterfeit badge contest. I thought maybe you could. Okay, I want to thank everybody that made this possible. You see a lot of departments here. Um, everybody is a small piece of the whole. Some work all year round, some are just on site. But I just want to have everybody give it up for everybody who's made this possible. Zant's wondering how many people here, by show of hands, did not make it to a village? Oh, how not many did not make it to Planet Hollywood or Flamingo? All right. Ooh. Okay, so Thanks. we do something every year, just like we have black badges that get you in for life. If you serve as a goon successfully <laughs> um, <laughs> for 10 years, uh, you get a gold badge, and that's sort of the, the goon's version of the Uber badge. It gets you in uh, for life for all of you that you've contributed all the time you've put into making the conference happen. So um, one of the goon uh, gold badge uh, recipients this year is going to be Pyro. Uh, he's put in way more than 10 years. Stand up if you know Pyro. Thank you all, DEF CON. Did everybody have an amazing time? 
I will be back as a human next year. <laughs> well, I guess technically Gold Batch isn't human, but thank you all very, very much for everything that you have all ever done. Um, thank you for your attendance. We, we couldn't do this without you. Obviously, we come and do this for you. And, and thank you very much to all of the goons who have worked with me over all the years supporting contests and events, workshops, registration, parties, everything else. You guys are really what's kept me here this long and, and I just, I can't thank you all enough. Thank you so much. I love you, Pyro. <laughs> yeah, kill him. <laughs> the hell was that? It was like a Who was that? Yeah. And then finally, we have the back end yeah, staff, the, the, uh, the DEF CON HQ. Uh, that's me, Nikita, Janet, Neil, Linda, Will, Dangton, and all the department heads uh, that deal with this uh, planning all year round. But as we talked about earlier, um, all good things must come to an end. And DEF CON is canceled. <laughs> Much like, much like the Uber raffle, yeah, DEF CON is canceled. So uh, we only knew this hotel for one brief year, but next year we're moving. Moving to what we hope to be our home for quite a while, which is the Caesars Forum. Not the Caesars Forum's shop, the Caesars Forum. That's not confusing, is it? Yes. Yes. It's still not up on the screen. Oh, they, can you put it on the screen, please? <laughs> okay, there we go. The Caesars Forum, which is a giant hole in the ground next door where they're building the largest structure without a pillar in the room in North America. And it will be connected to three hotels. Um, and that ho it's like, I think it's the Link, Flamingo, and Harrah's. So, those three hotels combined with our new mega space should provide us uh, really in, uh, some room to grow, uh, more flexible space. And by the way, it's happening uh, next year, 8th to the 11th in 2020. Wow. Registration opens on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and we really hope to see you there. We're taking feedback, we're trying to improve the con, and something we didn't mention earlier. Who here remembers the DEF CON forums from years ago? Yes. Woo. Woo. Okay, so they died for a while, a year and a half or two, and the forums are back, and if you want to provide us feedback, if you want to ask questions to the workshop uh, instructors, if you want to give us, uh, drop your docs on how you solve the challenge, we're collecting it all there, so we have a repository. So for example, all of the cheats and wins for the badge are posted there from every historical year. Um, so jump on the forums. Your dates are wrong. My dates are wrong. Who did that? What's it's my the fault? sixth. It's the sixth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sixth. Okay. Don't don't wait. Get off that slide. Sixth through ninth. You didn't see that slide. Sixth through ninth. No fuck you. Didn't see that. Do it live. Don't fuck it up. Woo. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. Okay. Just edit the slide. No. 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 <laughs> Okay, with that, I would like to officially call DEF CON 27 to a close. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next year.